hungry as fuck, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail bar on set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eating for the taste of the fly. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. Welcome on Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here. Uh, talking indie wrestling, the indie wrestling that we love. I'm a video producer here in Pittsburgh, PA, for the International Wrestling Cartel, the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and uh, other great stuff with uh, Sorgatron Media, Indie Wrestling.us, Finding Zach, Zach Gowan documentary. So much more and so much more we're working on. Uh, but uh, check us out, WrestlingMayhemShow.com for this and so many other shows. Subscribe on the iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube and Facebook pages, including streaming. We've been uh, these interviews have been popping up all over the place uh, at different times during the week, and we like to use the Facebook Live now. So make sure you follow us on uh, on the Facebook. So so whatever interviews pop up, including this one that we're doing today. When we started Wrestling Mayhem Show some uh, 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 ten years ago in 2006, we were in the midst of a revival of ECW. And one of the guys that caught our attention, other than Michael Q. Knoxville, of course, was. A vampire, Kevin Thorne, joining us uh, here on the Indie Mayhem Show. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, so, well, first of all, like say, we'd like to kind of get into uh, the love of indie wrestling, the love of wrestling on this show. Uh, so our first question we'd like to ask is, is what was your first kind of memory growing up? When did you kind of get turned on to wrestling? Uh, mine was uh, USWA uh, because growing up in Memphis, uh, it was on every Saturday morning on Channel 5. And then at the time, it was still going on the Mid-South Coliseum on Monday night. Um, so that was, you know, that, that was kind of my first taste of wrestling um, was, was uh, you know, Jerry the King Law or Bill Dundee, you know, and the, and the list of names that kind of came through there. I mean, Austin, The Rock, Hogan, I mean, you know, it, it, you know the, the names go on and on with came through there. So, you know, I was kind of blessed to be in a territory that just, you know, it, it, it kept them coming. And it was kind of, you know, uh, for lack of a, it, it was it was kind of like the modern, you know, uh, or, or the southern ECW in a way. You know, they had the, uh, you know, the, the gimmick matches and uh, uh, concession stand match, you know, all, all kind of crazy stuff. And it, it was, you know, always, always something uh, entertaining to watch. Awesome. I, I'm always jealous of people that that um, grew up in the Memphis area because it, it seemed like it was like a golden uh, area for it. We, we've talked with the director of uh, Memphis Heat that did the documentary on the area, on the territory and everything. Oh, yeah. And and I just to be, um, I, I had the one channel and superstars growing up Sunday morning, and that was my only access. And I, I'm, I'm almost jealous oh, yeah. of this. <laughs> so awesome. So how did you go from there to, to say, I want to get in the ring, I want to get involved with this? Uh, man, um, I was uh, training at the Gold's Gym in uh, Memphis, uh, Tennessee. Uh, I was the morning manager, and uh, Sid Vicious um, was uh, working out there. Uh, he, he would drive over from West Memphis, Arkansas, uh, and, and, and drive it was about a 30-minute drive from, I guess, from his house. And uh, he worked out really early in the morning. And um, basically, his workout partner kept missing. So I kept spotting him and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And then... You know, finally it became, I ah, just go get your work, workout clothes on. Nobody, you know, nobody's really in here anyway that you need to be managing uh, and, you know, start working out with me. And it just, one thing led to another. Uh, and this is about the time, you know, he's coming off of his neck injury and all this stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, asked if I wanted to to, to, to go to a, uh, a ring, uh, a local ring in town and, and, and learn how to get into wrestling. Uh, you know, and of course it was like, well, yeah. Um, you know, I was a big kid at the time. Uh, you know, I, so it, it just, it just made sense. You know, I was like, heck yeah, let's try this out. And, uh, you know, one thing led to another and the, you know, this is the, uh, uh, kind of the first developmental territory was kind of in the Memphis area, you know, with, uh, Matt Bloom and, um, uh, uh, Steve Bradley, you know, some of those, some of those guys that were coming through. Um, and, and so it just, it just made sense. It was just kind of a, a, a an open door, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how was that experience in general? Like, cause I know eventually you, you went to OVW and of course W as we, as we mentioned, uh, but what, what were those, uh, first kind of years, uh, like for you, uh, being exposed to indie wrestling? Uh, man, you know, uh, OVW was awesome. I mean, you know, you had Danny Davis, who's trainer there, Rip Rogers, Jim Cornette, um, 
you know, and then you just, I mean, the, the talent that was there, Randy Orton, Brock, you know, when I first got there, it was like, holy crap, uh, you know, Batista, Randy Orton, John Cena, you know, Dinsmore, Conway, Doug Basham, uh, Danny Basham. I mean, you know, I mean, it, it was, it, you know, a who's who of, of future stars. Mm -hmm. there i mean um you, you know it, so it was it was always awesome walking in, into that awesome and so you came up with a lot of great guys there uh it, so uh, you know kind of looking in of course uh you know you're known for for you know short stint as mordecai the, the kevin thorne kind of vampire character i was looking back and saw that that you were you were uh seven beforehand uh was this something yep. that like wwe kind of pushed on you to go this direction with a look or something or is that the kind of character that you just kind of generally gravitated towards that man, that's the kind of character I've always kind of generally uh, gravitated towards. But yeah, basically, it was kind of a, a an ode to um, uh, you know all my religious you know religious background, growing up in a Baptist church, stuff like that. It's kind of just kind of what I knew, um, you know. And I, I, I you know hearing Sunday morning preaching and everything else, uh, you know, I, I just felt like that would be a great character because. You know, nobody wants to be told that they can't sin and they can't do wrong and all this stuff. And it just kind of seven was kind of a our Mordecai was kind of a uh, a newer age seven. Um, you know, and then the you know the vampire thing kind of just got it away from all of it because you know um, vampires you know aren't in the church and stuff like that. So it just kind of kind of drew it a different direction, I guess. When we uh, you know talk about kind of like a, a religion thing in uh, pro wrestling, we've had weird you know kind of instances like Vince McMahon versus God and things like that. Did you get obviously you're going to get a response from that, but were, were there kind of more heated responses? Especially, I mean, geez, coming up in in, in the region you did is probably it's more of the Bible Belt out there, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Uh, it, it was it, it was it was more. Um, uh, yeah, within within reason, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so from that, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, being part of something. Of course, ECW was a a kind of, uh, I guess, a brand extension at the time, right? Um, and and I know they were really kind of playing up this weird, you know, sci. It was first thing on Sci Fi Channel, and and there was that kind of angle to it. Was it exciting to be part of something new like that coming up in the WWE? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, ECW was. I mean, I mean, it's it, it, it's a it's a vision of guys that 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 wouldn't have made it in WWE that made something out of themselves like crazy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, the, the the way Paul made his talent was just just insane. Um, you know, it, it, it was it, 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 he he took he took talent that was at, you know average and they became superstars uh you know and the company became superstars um you know and, and then you know starting off with uh you know our brand of ecw you know at first it it, it felt like you know hey we're, we're we're trying to be a ripoff and everything else and you know guys are sort of but our thing was is is kind of like that old ecw mentality is no matter what it takes, we're going to get it over and we're going to make it work. And mm -hmm. I think that's, you know, as a team, that's kind of what we ended up doing. Mm -hmm. it, it felt like the early days were the best. Oh, sorry. It felt like the early days were the best because it felt like that uh, uh, the gloves were off and you guys weren't under the same rules as all the other brands were because we, we had three brands at the time, right? Kind of, and I, I kind yeah. of look back and look at, like, that seems like it feels like the early iteration of what we have today with NXT. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and I think if they would have put the money that they put into next, uh, into ECW, it, it would have been, uh, 10 times, you know, 10 times better. I mean, cause you, you didn't have a lot of the guys that, that are, uh, you know, a lot more seasoned guys, uh, were in ECW than there are in next, you know, the next guys are starting to up and come. I mean, there's a few that are very seasoned, but for the most part, it's a, you know, a, a, a lot of rookie guys. Where you know ECW had a kind of just a you know a lot of seasoned guys with RVD Dreamer, uh, you know Sabu uh, Show, I, I, you know Tess. I mean there were there were guys that have you know been there, you know kind of kind of knew it. Um, you know our, our hands were always tied. You know you come into a town and uh, you know it'd be an ECW show and there'd be like two two show posters out there letting people know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it, it, they just didn't seem like they wanted to spend the money on it that they, they, that they spent on, 
uh, you know, Raw or SmackDown. So, you know, we were, we, I think we were kind of, kind of a lot of us felt like the degenerates a little bit, you know, like we weren't wanted, but we were. Um, so we always, you know, we always came in with kind of a chip on our shoulders of, you know, hey, we're going to, we're going to come into this town. We're going to tear the roof off this place. And then hopefully by the next time we come back there, those people will be talking about it and they'll bring that many more people. You know, if, if you know, they're not, you know, WWE is not going to advertise for us. Right, right. It seemed like it seemed like they wanted the grassroots thing to happen a little bit, like ECW. But, but, but there was already established brand, so it seemed a little odd. Uh, so, because I, yeah. I, I know I've heard stories of even when the ECW stop. I think the one ECW stop we had here in Pittsburgh, and it was an hour out of town, and like the, the most rundown thing I can think of, you know, and and yeah. very awkward. Yeah, it was. I think that ice rink that was kind of like off the beaten trail. Oh yeah, uh, it was. Yeah, dirt, as dirty as could be. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. The same. That was like one of the first first ECW shows. Wow. Yeah. It, it, the first. Um. And, and I think you guys were in the summer. I think I heard like that that it was too hot in there. This is the same place that Ring of Honor did in a marathon session of TV tapings, and we were freezing our asses off in the middle of January because they they wouldn't turn on the heat, and and like the wrestlers were. Actually, I think like somebody actually got hurt because it was so cold in there. Uh, oh, so oh, that's crazy. That, that kind of gives you the idea. Like WWE is running a place like that. Like it, it, it's not. You know WWE goes better places right even on house shows said so then then oh then yeah well i mean you look at where next runs now i mean next is running in beautiful buildings you know the bar clays uh you know here that you know you know taking tours to japan i mean by themselves i mean you know up and up and down the road and stuff i mean you know a, 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 a production quality with their little studios and, and, and stuff like that down full sale i mean you know it, it's it's definitely it, it's an exciting time for wrestling because now it's, it's become a, a much bigger production. I mean, you know, you look at the sets of, of a raw and a SmackDown and all that stuff. Now, just how much more the sets are more interactive and uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a bigger TV picture now with the network. And I think it's an exciting time in wrestling because, you know, they, they got to pump it out because they got to make all this TV content, you know, and it has to look larger, you know, even more so larger than life than it already, uh, you know, already was. Certainly. And of course, uh, I, I listened to some of your other interviews talking about your time in the WWE and, uh, you know, it sounds like it was, you know, like a lot of guys, you know, there was a lot of frustration towards the end there, miscommunication. Uh, what was it like uh, uh, getting out of there and getting, uh, I, I presume, I, were you straight back on to getting shows on the indies after WWE? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, as soon as, you, as soon as you leave, you're hot. I mean, you know, yeah. people, people want to put you on their shows and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely went right back out out to work and, and, and stuff like that. Um, you know, I I took uh, you know uh, almost about three years off. I kind of disappeared for a while. Uh, went went some different aspects and stuff. And then, uh, man, I, I you know uh, Dave Hero out of Milwaukee had called and, and had a six flag show and wanted to know if I just wanted to come up for Fourth of July and do it. And I was like, man, I haven't wrestled in forever. And, you know, and got out there for three days with Ken Anderson and Al Snow and, uh, you know, some of the local guys. And, man, just had the time of my life with doing it. And I was like, oh, man, I'm, I really miss this. I mean, this is this is something that, I you know, I miss. I miss entertaining crowds. I miss, you know, uh, you know, seeing my seeing the boys and, you know, and just, you know, kind of having a good time. So, you know, um, definitely now, I'm you know, I guess on the way to kind of coming back uh, it's a lot harder now than it is then coming off tv because you know people are like oh well, you know you know why should we use you well i mean you, you, all you got to do is turn on the network and look me up I, it, it, anybody can do that i mean so if you advertise me tell people i'm on the network it, it's it's an easier time for them to to find a wrestler now than it is i think you know it was you know five six years ago i want to talk a little bit about uh house of hardcore here uh <laughs> that's coming up here in pittsburgh um and uh, you, you of course have been part of House of Hardcore. The first time that this uh, this uh, promotion has been uh, in Pittsburgh, PA, led by of course Tommy Dreamer, has been part of the International Wrestling Cartel, who's uh, a part of this. Uh, tell us a little bit about House of Hardcore. Uh, you know, what's what's kind of the vibe with those guys? Man, I, it, I think it's I think it's awesome. I think it's kind of how um, you know it, I'd only imagine how the original ECW was. Um, you know. Uh, it's just a bunch of guys. I mean, you know, there's, there's no politics. There's no BS. Uh, I mean, as soon as you walk in, it's just, it's, it's laughter. It's smiles. It's, Hey man, how you been doing? You know, all this stuff. And it's a bunch of guys that just want to go out there and just, 
you know, have the best time of their life performing in front of, you know, in, in front of the crowd. Um, you know, Tommy's always led, led that way, you know, um, in his leadership and everything else is, you know, Tommy's a stand up guy, doesn't have an enemy in the world. I don't think of the wrestling business. And I mean, it, that's, that's what makes it fun is, you know, just, just going out there and it's, it's, it, you know, it, it, no really restrictions go out there, man, have the best match you can entertain the people and, and just, and just have a good time. And I mean, you know, and that's, that's what wrestling should be, um, mm-hmm. to me. And of course, you know, uh, House of Hardcore coming back here in Pittsburgh. Uh, markedly, uh, Car Time Sports Center will be a better facility. Still kind of out there <laughs> than your first stop here with ECW. Um, it's kind of a, a a comeback on your journey for this to to kind of revisit that and with a uh, you know a better vibe and 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 you know something really cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. Man, you know, I, I, I like I I've been training probably harder for this than I have. Um, you know, in a long time, because I, you know, to me, this is a, this stage, you know, this weekend, this, this, uh, you know, Cleveland and Pittsburgh show, I get to kind of show, Hey, you know what? I, like I, I turned 40 this year, but I feel like I'm in better shape now and better mindset, you know, uh, uh a physical feeling and everything else than I ever have been, um, you know, going into a show. So, um, maybe, you know, it, for me, you know, coming in, coming in the, into this is, you know, definitely coming in with something to prove, you know, to, you know, kind of show the fans, Hey, you know, I haven't just been, you know, sitting on my ass and eating, eating donuts and stuff like that. I've been, <laughs> you know, training hard. So I give them the best, best product that they're going to be able to see. So uh, we like to end off the shows uh, with a, a couple of quick questions. First of all, and I want to kind of double this up. Uh, well, first of all, what are you watching today? What are you into? What's kind of inspiring to you or, or guys you're watching out for? Um, what, what what wrestling is getting your attention these days? Uh, I mean, definitely the Matt Hardy thing I love. Uh, you know, and I think that's being talked about a lot. Uh, just the uh, the rawness of it and stuff like that. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Bray Wyatt, of course, because, uh, you know, it's – it's so similar to to kind of what I did. I just, I mean, I love his style, I love the way he talks, I love his work, um, you know, and, and all that stuff. And uh, you know, uh, um, you know, Luke, Luke Gallows and and, and Carl, uh, you know, two guys that I think, you know, I just like that rough, tough tag team that you know, no BS. You know, you just need that heel of that just goes goes out there and just you know has no problem. You know, uh, you know, no glamour, no anything. Just, just, just straight punch you in the face. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'd be great if they brought you in as the fifth Wyatt, right? Oh man, dude, I, uh, <laughs> it, it would be awesome. It would be awesome. All right. Um, and uh, typically, uh, I like to ask, uh, what is, and we get a lot of different answers for this, uh, one way or the other. Um, uh, is like both the best and worst question that we ask here. Uh, but uh, what is the best and worst thing about um indie wrestling for you? Promoters that think they're Vince McMahon when they're not. Um, uh, and you get a lot of that. They think that they, you know, created the wheel, which they didn't. Um, you know, and then the best part about it is, is you know, just a chance to see some old friends, uh, stuff like that, and then kind of see, uh, you know, a, a group of up, upcoming guys that, uh, you know, you, you know, you know, as soon as you see somebody on the indie, sometimes that kid's going to make it mm-hmm. and, you know, kind of seeing the, the, the future of what wrestling uh, is going to be. Awesome. And I, I want to do a new version of this because I think it's a special occasion having you on here. Um, and this is for this. This is, this is for my friend who was very excited because I, I said you're coming on and he's like, Mordecai's coming. Awesome. So I'm like, I got to ask, oh, yeah. what's the best and worst thing? About being Mordecai during that run. Uh, the best thing was, um, I mean, I just got to do it. Uh, it, it ended. The worst thing, it definitely ended way too soon. Uh, my hair was falling out uh, because I bleached it too much. <laughs> um, but man, you know, uh, Mordecai was. It, 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 it's still one of those things where you know I think everybody says it could have, should have, would have. I mean, you know. Um, you know, wrong. T- I just made the wrong decision at the you know wrong time, and it, it ended up uh, taking it all away from us. But um, you know, no regrets. I mean, I got a you know a beautiful wife, a beautiful family, everything else. Everything happens for a reason. You know, who, who knows? You know what it could have. You know, if it would have transpired into something super awesome, I think so. But you know, um, maybe one day we'll find out. I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, where can people find you online? And, and of course, uh, th- this week in House of Hardcore, Cleveland and Pittsburgh spots. Twitter wise at the Kevin Fertig. Um, uh, on Facebook, uh, Kevin Thorn Fertig. Uh, Instagram, the uh, Kevin Fertig. Um, and pretty much that's it, man. Um, you can find me on there. Uh, follow me. Give me a like. All that stuff. And then, man, I, I try to keep everything as up to date as possible on where to get stuff. Uh, you go to Pro Wrestling Tees and get my shirts. Uh, Kevin Fertig there. I'm about to uh, put some new ones out uh, and stuff like that. And uh, that's about it, man. Thank you so much to Kevin Thorne for joining us uh, here. Uh, check him out. Like House of Hardcore. Speaking of House of Hardcore, there's some other... I, I, I don't want to say con- I guess not controversy, but it uh, uh, some 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 things going on with the IWC Super Indie Champion uh, uh, Josh Alexander, who the Walking Weapon, who we had on a few weeks ago here on this very show, and we were really excited to see what's going on with him, and and of course his match coming up with, and of course Chris Larusso joined us, who was going to face him a, a couple weeks ago on Wrestling Mayhem show, and we talked a little bit about that as well. But uh, this is an ongoing thing, and I think it's worth some conversation. So let's talk about it, and I hope that you guys have a discussion with us online as well. So basically, uh, those who don't know, and I might have mentioned this on on this show. I I know uh, other places I've been talking about this. AIW have a great card. The card is going to change podcast. Again, Kevin Thorne, we've had on the show talking about that a couple of months ago. And one of their, I think it's episode nine when I was looking for it, um, when they were talking about Absolution, one of the Absolution shows. Uh, it's hard for wrestlers to come here from Canada, guys. Um, apparently, there's a, 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 an issue where uh, America doesn't want them to come in here without a work visa to work, whereas the Canadians, like apparently American wrestlers can go to Canada without much problem. Um, Canada is usually notorious for not letting you want, wanting you to come up and work, but but it, it, this is the understanding that was explained on the AW podcast. Uh, because it's the kind of entertainment it is, they realize it's kind of good for everything for, for this to happen. It has to be different rules. But unfortunately, and, and, then, and they, they stated a, a story about, um, I think, Sienna, I think they said. Um, I, I wasn't unclear if that's TNA's Sienna or, or not. I, but I, I might not be connected there. I need aiming for this. But um, Either way, she was uh, banned from the U.S. Like whole wholesale banned from the U.S. setting foot on soil for a, for five years. Pretty crazy. Um, when you get caught, and this is one of those things that's at the discretion of the border patrol and everything. Josh Alexander, unfortunately, he's Canadian. You couldn't tell by the interview uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, he he had a statement he put on Twitter. Bad news. Apparently, he was trying to go to an, uh, if I got this right, an AAW show, uh, which I think is Chicago uh, this past week, and uh, and, and got snagged. Uh, apparently, you can read his Twitter. Uh, we shared this on the Wrestling Mayhem Show group, and I think it's also shared on the IWC group. Actually, I got this from the IWC group, the, the, the Twitter, walking underscore uh, weapon on, on Twitter is where he posted it. Uh, he was on his way over. He got snagged. He got... Uh, he is not banned from the United States. He can come here. Unfortunately, he did have to sign a piece of paper, uh, according to his account, that stated that he will not come here without a work visa to work in wrestling. Very unfortunate. But this also opens up a new opportunity because there w- was kind of a shout out to, um, hey, you know who issues work visas? Ring of Honor, uh, uh, TNA probably, uh, WWE, you know, the big ones. Lucha Underground, I'm sure, does it. They got a lot of Mexican wrestlers. I don't know what the relationship is between Mexico and America as far as these kind of work things go. I'm sure it's probably worse, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so there's that, that opportunity and kind of a little bit of campaigning about it. Uh, I know IWC was a big about it. Tell the big guys. And I know we got a lot of big guys that listen to the show here. Chris is Joseph, friend of the show, of course, with Dooch Underground. I'm not directly saying please, but but please consider our friend here. Um, but in, in one of the messages, I wanted like kind of fans to be aware of this because I mean this is a you know this is inside baseball definitely, and that's what we talk about here a lot. But I hope that if you know there is a Canadian wrestler on the card. No matter where it is in the United States, if the, you know you know that guy or originated from Canada. Even though he may say he's from Myrtle Beach, California, or Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, you know, uh, but but still, there's there's there, there's you know, I know guys like RJ City, guys like um, I believe the Fraternity are from Canada as well. 
uh, that, that join us for IWC. There's a risk in them doing this. Um, they have to roll the dice basically anytime they cross that border. And, and they know they need to come to the United States to get more exposure. Again, like this guy has worked with PWG, AIW, IWC, Beyond Wrestling, Ring of Honor. I mean, he, he's, and he was on a, a, a crazy roll. Like you could see this guy building up just from everywhere he's been showing up. JT Lightning Tournament, Super Indie Tournament, all this kind of stuff. To, to this point where it's just it just got halted. And nothing against Canadian wrestling indies, but what do you hear about uh, from Canadian wrestling indies? The only one I'm even aware of is um, the one that Jimmy Corderas is involved with in Toronto and Border City Wrestling. Uh, and there's more, I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure there's some that are more prevalent. Well, even, even some of the bigger ones. Like Smash Wrestling was up in Niagara Falls, if I have my geography right. Uh, so... So if you see a Canadian wrestler, I just want you guys to kind of appreciate what that means, you know, that they're there, wherever it is in the country. Uh, whether that is, you know, just showing a little more gratitude, uh, buying a t-shirt, whatever the case may be, uh, and or tell your friends about them. Tell your friends about them. You know, I think a, a perfect example was uh, RJ City popped up on uh, Cole Cabana's podcast, and he's like... He's like this weird, like well kept secret for as insanely talented he is, and humorous, and a gold girls lover. Um, that you know, he should be out there, you know, a bit more. So, I think it's a, a it's something to consider for this week. A little bit of food for thought. Think about that with the Indies. Like we said, we just talked about a whole bunch. How's the hardcore this weekend? Uh, in Pittsburgh at the Court Time Sports Center. If you go to IWC shows, you are familiar with this. Houseofhardcore.net. Don't go to .com, especially at work. Um, and also, they have a Friday show in Cleveland. If you're in that area, check out Houseofhardcore.net for information on that. I uh, do have to give a shout-out. Uh, we do have our friends uh, at the Renegade Wrestling Alliance are also doing a show in West Newton, PA. If uh, House of Hardcore is not sure or you got written up at work because you went to .com. Uh, so check them out, rdbalive.com. Uh, we also have some special events coming up here. Again, for you guys in the Pittsburgh area, and uh, again, I hope we get Raymond rolled in here soon so we can start talking something out of the region uh, very, very soon. Uh, but uh, uh, we are going to be doing some live spots uh, very soon. Uh, we're, we're a little bit of experiment. We'll see how this goes, but we're going to take the Wrestle Ma Wrestling Mayhem show live to our friends at Code Red Wrestling and Renegade Wrestling Alliance uh, in, the, in their October and November shows, respectively. Check out dates on that if you're coming. If you've been thinking to check out some of these uh, uh, feds, uh, please do that. Um, uh, especially Code Red because uh, they actually uh, the, the, their shows generally are. Um, I think it's really cool. Uh, the proceeds from the show, every show goes to a charity. They'll pick a charity. They'll they'll, they'll do those. Um, and and uh, this one, it's going to be uh, St. Jude's Children's uh, Research uh, Hospital. So uh, it's real cool. Go check that out again. All these kind of south of Pittsburgh, if you're in the region, check it out. Or, you know, hopefully we'll be bringing you guys something fun on the uh, feeds. So please subscribe to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're not sure where we're going to put it just yet. It might be a special edition of Indie Mayhem Show. It might be, you know, part of the main show. Uh, we're, we're, we're still kind of playing with the idea. Um, also, I invite you guys to check out, uh, we did post at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, the um, No Mercy Tournament, N64 No Mercy Tournament, uh, with our friends looking for group. Uh, we uh, Papa Lunchbox live commentated with us uh, with uh, for the live stream on Twitch. So we had those embedded over there on our website. Uh, so go check it out. I apologize. Yep, there's commercials if you don't have a Twitch account. Sorry, it, it got really weird when I was trying to do that. Uh, but there you go. If you have Amazon Prime, hot tip. If you have Amazon Prime, you now also have a Twitch account. That's a paid account. They just changed that like in the last week or two. Uh, so other than that, check out everything. Of course, IndieWrestling.us. A lot of these guys uh, uh, posting shows up there. We actually have a new promotion that's going to be premiering on IndieWrestling.us. Uh, pr Premier Championship Wrestling out of Ohio. Uh, just got the uh, the file in today. Uh, getting the information lined up, and that should be posted here uh, hopefully before the end of the week. So keep an eye on that. Subscribe. If you go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com or IndieWrestling.us, uh, there's a link for uh, at the top of the page for... Uh, entering for a, uh, a newsletter 
where we talk about what's going on with the Wrestling Mayhem Show, what's going on with Indie Mayhem or Indie Wrestling US. The Indie Mayhem Show is part of all that too, and you get a free digital download from the IWC. So that's everything. This is my one man with a guest show. I'm at Sorgatron, and make sure you guys support indie wrestling. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.